Hello, thanks for joining uh, doTERRA, the Essential Life series that I've been doing for the last few months. My name is Kara Blotman Rock, and I am the founder of doTERRA in Israel and have a nice growing community here in New Mexico and Colorado area and California. So today's topic is how to use essential oils in creating natural cleaning products. And myself, I like to, I really like things to be done um, quickly and easily and effectively. Um, I'm not one to make my own products really, make my own deodorant, make my own skincare. If there's a good product made, I like to buy it and use it. Um, but I do make, and I'll go over the list, I'm gonna have some options of cleaning products that I don't personally make, but I have some good recipes for them. And then I'll identify the things that I do on a regular basis make for myself because it's easy and I prefer it. Now we're at that time and age in Israel and in the United States, especially where you can get really good, clean cleaning products for your home and know that you're not exposing yourself to chemicals and toxins. But if you want to save money or save on um, packaging, like not because the thing about buying a great product is that you're always getting a new plastic bottle that you're um, when it's empty, you're just throwing it back into the landfill. So if that's a concern for you and it's something that you'd like to change, then making your own products is a good way to make sure your home's clean and safe from chem chemicals. And then you're gonna reduce your use of plastics, which is a good thing in it, at this day and age of all these plastic cleaning bottles. So I'm gonna share the screen so that you can see the presentation. Alrighty. Okay. So green cleaning, natural solutions with doTERRA. Um, so this healthy living philosophy is that, you know, really reflecting on the cleaning products that you have at home. And we're probably going to do this in the future about the the grooming products that we use as well, because it's really important the, the a reflection of the health of your home is a reflection of the health of your body. You want a healthy home so that it just supports the health of your body and doesn't create damage to the health of your body. So cleaning home, clean, healthy home is a clean, healthy body is my philosophy because 90% of accidental poisonings can occur at home by your children, your pets, and even yourself through chemicals that we have in our home that we think might, you know, we don't even think about them. We just, we have them there because that's what we use to, to clean. Um, and we don't realize that they can be toxic. Um, my mouse is not working just a minute. Okay, hold on a minute. I have to admit some people into the, the, and it won't let me do it when I'm playing the full video. That's strange. Okay, just a minute, everybody. Okay, there we go. So, on average in your home, in the home, it can be 70 times more chemical contaminant levels in your home. And this was a study five years ago. So now it's even older because I did this presentation probably three years ago. So it's, um, I, have, I can't have the whole thing. Sorry, I can't have the whole slideshow in full form or I can't ad admit people to the... So I'm gonna just keep it on half. So there are, um, so, and the reason why maybe your home is, is having more contaminants in its air quality is because it's shut, shut up, it's shut in, the windows are closed. Or, um, and again, you, we are, we're having this conversation today and this lesson today to analyze 
what you're using in your home and making sure that you're getting rid of anything that might be contributing to chemicals or toxins in your home environment. Because so one of the first things you can do in your home environment to really help reduce and clean the air quality in your home is open the windows, like have the windows open in your home when the weather's good. And just a little bit every day have the windows open and have um, cross breezes occurring so that you can just clean out the, um, your home and its air levels on a daily basis. So that's something simple that you can do. There are over 80,000 chemicals registered by the EPA that are considered um, safe, but you know, the, but their safety level is it, it's being determined by the EPA. So they're still toxic, but considered safe. Um, just in your home alone, there's more, more than 150 chemicals in ordinary household products that are directly linked, that have been directly linked to cancer, allergies, neurological effects, physiological disorders. Um, so this is why we're having this conversation today. Let's look through our products, get rid of what we can and replace it with making our own or, or products that we know that are safe. So really important for our babies and our animals and our elderly in our home who are much more sensitive to chemical exposure that we're, that you're paying attention today and taking the action steps to clean out some of the toxins that may be in your home. Um, so one of the ways that you expose yourself to toxins in your grooming products or in your um, house and cleaning products is that by smelling them, that's the same way that you um, expose yourself to essential oils and the therapeutic value and benefits of essential oils. That's the same way that you expose yourself to toxins is by smelling them and it becomes cumulative. The interesting thing about essential oils is when you smell them, They'll, your body will use them and eliminate them within an hour to two hours of smelling them. Chemicals in, um, toxic chemicals that are in cleaning products or grooming products, you can smell them or expose them to your skin and they are absorbed by the fat tissue in your body. So you keep them in your body and oftentimes don't eliminate them. So this is called toxic, toxic burden where you um, begin to accumulate them and it really starts to, 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 to affect your filtering organs, the livni, livni, liver, kidneys, and immune system. And in children, those are underdeveloped systems still. So it's really, um, can be really detrimental to their growth and um, maturity of their health systems. Um, and they're most likely to be exposed to these toxins because of their one, like if you're putting um, them on the floors, like cleaning your floors, they're crawling around with many, if they're crawling around their hands, their knees, their feet, they're closer smelling to it. So it's something to really um, pay attention to. And there is starting to be a link of children's exposure to these chemicals and developing a degenerative disease later on in life. So let's stop that from happening. So some of the common um, cleaning ingredients that are toxic, and I'm probably gonna butcher these words, but naphtha phosphate, it's a neurotoxin classified as a hazardous waste, and it's found in most dishwashing soap. And this is dishwashing soap that we're like thinking we're cleaning our dishes and glasses and utensils, and then we use them directly in our mouth afterwards. So really important that you look at your dishwashing soap and make sure that it doesn't have this component. So write it down and I can send it to you. Um, but I'm gonna give you a solution for a dishwashing soap. And there are also um, clean dishwashing soaps that are out there that are made. And I used one in Israel that I really loved. And there's a ton here in the United States. If you're, um, That's one thing I don't make is the dishwashing soap. 
I just buy a good alternative that I know doesn't have toxic chemicals in it, like this naphtha phosphate. Um, Alkabenzine sulfonate, easily absorbed through the skin and can damage the liver. It's found in laundry detergent. So after this conversation today in this lesson, I need to look at my laundry detergent because I do not make my own laundry detergent. And doTERRA offers a really good laundry detergent, On Guard. For the seven years that I lived in Israel, it couldn't be shipped to Israel because of its weight, but now it can. So the On Guard laundry detergent can be easily accessed, um, accessible to um, all of you guys in Israel. Triclosan and triclocarbon are antimicrobial pesticides in liquid and bar soap. They're toxic to marine life, so not only to yourself, but when it goes into the water and into the reserve and into the sea, it's toxic to, to marine life. But for us, it's linked to thyroid and reproductive hormone dysfunction. Um, and it's linked to bacterial um, resistance. So those like crazy bacterial resistant strains that are kind of um, developing all over, all over the world, like um, MRSA or um, even viral um, resistant strains. So just be aware of the soap that you're using and we're gonna talk about alternatives. And the other thing that I just put on here that I want you to be really aware of, and um, if you can get bleach out of your bleach and ammonia out of your life after this call, I um, I um, commend you because those are both very toxic cleaning chemicals. But I know, um, especially in Israel, bleach, also known as, if somebody could like unmute themselves and tell me what we call bleach in Israel, it's um. Edith, what is it? Chlor. Chlor. Chlorine. Chlorine. Yeah. But what's the product that like all Israelis love to clean with and it has a lot of bleach in it? It's called um Chlor. Right, but what is it? Uh, right. Economica. 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 Right, right. Because I know like, most of my family members don't can't imagine their life without economica <laughs> but, oh. and that has a lot of bleach in it um but mixing bleach and ammonia like who would know this who the average person wouldn't know that mixing bleach and ammonia which is already done for you in glass cleaners can produce what they call a deadly cocktail where it dissolves lung cells and tissues in the lungs just by breathing it in and think about when you're spraying a mirror with a cheap glass cleaner and you're inhaling the residue of it, it's, it's damaging to your lungs and if you, over time. So, I mean, I just used a glass cleaner the other day because I, and I'm glad I'm having this lesson with you guys because it's just reacquainting to me to like, you kind of do these things in your life that you don't really think are hazardous or a problem but they are, and over time, and we have more of these illnesses that are occurring in our life of autoimmune disease and cancer and um, a lot of neurological diseases. And it, I am convinced, and it is my perspective that a lot of these neurological diseases, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, um, dementia, uh, um, different kinds of neurological diseases that don't have a reason why it's occurring is this low grade constant exposure to chemicals. And there's a, there's a part of our life that's always going to be exposed to chemicals because we don't have control of it. But our cleaning products and our grooming products, we do have control to make sure that we're not self-exposing ourselves to toxins. And just um, and know that okay, I'm gonna just clean up this part of my life because I can control this part. Um, so think about what's in your home right now. Just like make a mental list in your home of what you do have as far as cleaning detergent, automatic dishwasher detergent, oven cleaner, carpet cleaner, all-purpose cleaner, a drain cleaner, furniture polish. Um, chlorine, window uh, bleach, window cleaner, 
toilet cleaner, stovetop scrub, mildew mold remover, dishwashing liquid, wipes, room deodorizer, fabric softener. I mean, think about all these different bottles of stuff that you may have in your home right now that you're using because this is what you use for this. This is what you use for this. This is what you use for this. And it really starts to add up. So I'm asking you today, after today's talk, I recommend that you re reduce that, those, look at those items in your house and reduce it by half, if not more, and let's replace it with some of these um, products that we're gonna, some of these ways of making it yourself. And then just reducing it, you can reduce it to using an all-purpose cleaner for most of these, which is what I do make, and I have a great recipe for that for you guys. So here we go. Um, creating your own safe and natural home cleaners is it's it's easy, it's simple, and it's doable. Um, so here's some of the main ingredients that you're gonna need, and then we're gonna get real specific with it. But like a Castile soap or a natural degreaser, like a natural cleaning soap, they are starting to have Bronner's Castile soap in Israel. It's kind of expensive though. Here they have it more easily and it's not as expensive. But the alternative to the Castile soap is, and I love it, it's, I don't even buy the Castile soap, is the On Guard All-Purpose Concentrated Cleaner. I love this stuff. And it lasts forever. Like I've had this bottle for like eight months, I think. And I, um, I use it for direct cleaning projects like the toilets and the sink. And then I, um, and then I use it to make my all purpose cleaning spray. So I use it a lot and it lasts for a long time and you can get it easily in Israel. You can get it easily in the United States and it's great. So I use this as my soap to make all my products. And I'll also tell you when I use it directly. So you can either get the Castile, um, Dr. Brommer's Castile Concentrate Soap or the On Guard Concentrate. So you'll need this. You need white distilled vinegar um, or witch hazel. But what white distilled vinegar does is it has the ability to, to dissolve soap scum. It cleans glass super effectively. It has a disinfectant quality to it. It also is a natural fabric softener. So we're gonna talk, talk about a fabric softener that you can add to your laundry if you, um, if that's important to you to have a softer laundry. And it it's a, has the ability to shine tile. So it's great to add to all of the products that we're gonna make for these reasons. Lemon juice is a lemon juice. The juice of the lemon is a natural bleach. So that'll actually, if like your um, white tile in the bathroom is starting to discolor, then you can add um, the lemon juice of a fresh lemon to your cleaning concoction to help whiten tiles or floors or surfaces that are starting to discolor. And it's a natural stain remover, the juice, as well as we'll learn that the lemon oil um, re can um, get rid of stains, gum, gooiness. It just um, will break apart any type of greasy gooiness that's hard to get rid of. Baking soda is a great um, uh, ingredient to always have at home. It removes odor, it dissolves dirt, it scrubs soap scrum because it acts as like a, um, like a, what do you call that, Scour an, a scouring ingredient and it can actually unclog drains. And a little tip, because I don't think I have a slide on it, is baking soda and vinegar combination. Like if you scorched a pan on top of the stove top and it, you scorched it, it's like sticky black rice on the bottom of the pan. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna have to throw that pan away. Put it on the bottom of your sink and sprinkle it with baking soda. Just cover the whole bottom with baking soda and then pour white vinegar on. And within minutes, it'll just clean off, no problem. Like with just a soft sponge, it'll come off completely. And, and like it makes that job so easy. You don't have to throw away the pan and you have not inhaled any toxic chemicals. 
Um, borax, I don't think that you can't really get borax very easily in Israel. That was not something that I was able to get. So I just replaced it to, with baking soda. They're similar in their quality, quanti, qualities, um, except for that borax already does have this antibacterial, antiviral, anti-mold and mildew quality to it, which baking soda is not as strong in that attribute, but we'll just add the essential oils that are. Um, so you don't have to try to track down borax because it's not, it's not um, sold very, very, very commonly in Israel. In, in the United States it is. Okay, so doTERRA essential oils, everybody on this call knows what a doTERRA, what essential oils are. It's the, it's the compound of the plant. It's coming either from the seed, the leaf, the stem, the root, the bark. And almost all essential oils have an antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial, natural insecticide quality to it. So those are all the things that you're looking for when you're cleaning and disinfecting. Um, so when I really at one point tried to go on a mission of helping the Gans clean with essential oils instead of the Economica. And they were just convinced that the, like it had to be Economica to really get rid of germs and bacteria because the essential oils just meant it smelled nice. But essential oils are, if not stronger than Economica because they have all these anti properties to them antifungal, antiviral, antimicrobial, anti insecticide, um, deodorize, disinfect, and there's no side effects. And it helps abundant, bun abundant benefits of just help your cleaning and disinfecting. And by smelling your cleaning products that you've made with doTERRA, you're also creating healthiness within you. Um, emotionally and physically. Um, a little bit, you know, certified pure therapeutic grade essential oils is so important in being what's included in your cleaning products. If someone saw this presentation and they went out and wanted to start making cleaning products with the five shekel lavender that's sold at um, Super Farm, it's, or the the 10 shekel eucalyptus that's sold somewhere, it's not gonna be the same effectiveness as what we're talking about with therapeutic grade essential oils that doTERRA creates. So it has to be high quality essential oils in your cleaning products um, in order for you to get the effectiveness. When people say, are switching over from doTERRA to the cheap essential oils, and then they say, well, what should I do with these? I could just put them in the diffuser. And I'm like, no, do not put them in the diffuser. Cheap essential oils is not what you wanna be smelling. And then I think, oh, well, you could clean with them. No, actually, no, you can't clean with them because they're not gonna be effective. So I say, you can add it to your toilet water. <laughs> because it's like, what else do you do with them? They like don't really, they're not effective in cleaning because they don't have the properties we're talking about. You don't want to smell them. You don't want to put them on. You don't want to ingest them. So it's like, you don't, you're not going to lick the surface of your toilet bowl. So you can clean, put them in your toilet water when you clean your toilet. They don't always think that's so funny, but if you're in doTERRA, you do. Okay, so green cleaning with doTERRA essential oils. So some of the oils that I recommend and why for your cleaning is of course, Melaleuca, because it's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and it's disinfected. It's not one of the first oils I use a lot in my um, products because I, I don't really want my house smelling like Melaleuca. And there's so many other products that have those properties. So Melaleuca is not one of the main oils that I use in my, in my, um, in my cleaning products. But if something's going around in the house right now, I will put it in the diffuser with something with On Guard or, or something else. But I mostly use Melaleuca for just our maintaining our health. Like yesterday, my daughter said that she's starting to get um, congestion in her throat and, and congestion in her nose. So I had her four ounces of water, one drop of Melaleuca, gargle it um, for like three, diff 
three times of gargling it and then swallowing it. I mostly use melaleuca internally and topically for physical health of the body, not so much in my cleaning products. Peppermint, I use a lot. Antibacterial, antiparasitic, antiseptic, and it smells great, really uplifting for the home. Lemon, I put in everything. It's just like melaleuca except for it smells amazing and it's an antidepressant, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, astringent and refreshing. So astringent means that it's like, it could be, well, you'll see it in the window cleaner cause it like does, it keeps um, from streaking. It gets rid of gooey, gummy, sticky stuff. It'll clean the top of a stove that's super gooey, no problem. Lavender's great, has almost all the same properties is melaleuca, um, but it smells amazing. Lemongrass, um, great to add to your counter spray if you're having insect or ant problems because they don't like lemongrass. They don't like clove. They don't like peppermint. So those are great to add to any of your sprays or your mop water if you're having um, during the season of when ants are starting to invade. Um, Rosemary is great. I add that to a lot of products. It's similar to eucalyptus in its properties. Thyme is like a stronger melaleuca, also smells really strong. So um, I usually only use it for like once in a while cleanings of the stove or the stove top. I don't put it in my regular um, all-purpose spray because it's not something I want to smell on a regular basis. And then Purify is an oil specifically made by doTERRA for having all these oils in it that are, um, that are good for cleaning and antibacterial, anti. And of course I can't read the label on the bottle, so I'm just gonna look um, in the book. And in my Modern Essentials book, look up Purify really quick just to give you the exact ingredients and purify is great in the diffuser again because we at the beginning of this presentation we talked about how there's a large amount of chemical um, and unclean air that just hangs out in your home so open the windows and put some of these oils in your diffuser at least once a day just to purify the air and purify where are you Okay, so Impurify is lemon, lime, Siberian fir, citronella, melaleuca, and cilantro. So some of these oils are specifically good for air pathogens and killing air pathogens. That's why it's good to have it in the diffuser. It's amazing for getting rid of mildew and um, just cleaning and deodorizing anything that you're adding it to. And Citrus Bliss has all the citrus oils, so it has the same properties as lemon, and it smells amazing. So I wanted to include that. So this is my favorite recipe, and I make it um, consistently and have been making it consistently and using it consistently for like, I want to say 10 years. Um, it's, uh, you're going to need a one liter spray bottle ideally glass or stainless still so that the plastics don't break down because um, you know essential oils will break down the plastic um, which is really I mean you're putting this on surfaces that you're going to be exposing yourself to or exposing your children to so you don't need to break down plastics and pull the chemicals from that plastic bottle into your clean cleaning spray so ideally it's good to get a stainless like a metal spray bottle which I know you can get at the home goods stores. I've gotten them at the home goods stores in um, Israel. But if it takes you a couple weeks to find a, stain, a metal steel, a metal bottle, don't wait. Make it right. Make it into make it in a plastic spray bottle and make it a goal to find a metal spray bottle or a glass spray bottle for your future um, cleaning uh, all-purpose projects but for right now make it in a plastic bottle don't be don't let that stop you from doing it now so in one liter spray bottle you're going to want about two cups of what i do is i actually 
put the ingredients in first and then fill it the rest of the way with water. So what I do is, here's my spray bottle, it's empty, it's ready to be replenished. I do um, a little squirt about, it's about a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm not great at measuring things out, so I just squirt it in there, but I would say it's approximately a quarter teaspoon of Castile soap, or in our case, it's the On Guard um, concentrate. And then I do 10 drops of lemon almost every time. And I always do eucalyptus, about 10 drops of eucalyptus. And then I usually do another oil, like la one that's like really nice, like lavender or um, peppermint, peppermint, lemon and eucalyptus sounds, um, smells amazing. Um, or lemon, eucalyptus and wild orange. Um, I usually do a third one. I need to update this slide. I usually do about 30 drops of three different, so 10 drops of each of three oils, always lemon and eucalyptus, and then I kind of play around with the other one. And then quarter teaspoon of On Guard, a splash of vinegar, I'm saying here two to four tablespoons, and then fill it the rest of the way with water. And that's your all-purpose cleaner. If you don't have Castile soap yet, and you don't have the On Guard concentrate yet, just if you have a natural dishwashing liquid at home, like that you know is not toxic, I would squeeze a bit of that in there as your soap. Um, and then here I just put a variety of oils that can be used is lavender, peppermint, lemongrass, wild orange, melaleuca, purify for your all purpose cleaning spray. And I have that, um, I have a couple bottles of that made because I use it in the kitchen and I use it in the bathroom and my kids use it because my kids, kids do chores around the house and they have their Shabbat chores. And I know that they could um, get their hands in it. It could spray on their skin a little bit. Maybe they're smelling it and I don't worry about it. When my two-year-old is walking around and puts her hands on the rim of the toilet, it still kind of freaks me out because it's the rim of the toilet. But I know that like it, she's not like putting her hands on toxic chemicals. Um, and she wants to spray so that like before um, I had these and my two-year-old wasn't alive, but my first two-year-old, Sophia, I would just like, and I've even my, my aunt, my sister-in-law is in Israel. When they clean the house, they have their husbands take the kids out of the house completely because they know that they're cleaning it with toxic materials and they don't want them around walking and touching it but it doesn't leave the house after when they're ready for them to come back in and I'm going to have this conversation with them because I love those those ladies and their their children um okay so we finished the all-purpose cleaning spray so the next one is window cleaner um I need this one works great I haven't made it in a while because I like window cleaner and glass cleaner um, those are like not the activities at home that I do frequently, but it needs to be done because I've um, been noticing I need a window cleaner. So in this, it, it's more vinegar than in the all-purpose spray. That's what makes it different because the vinegar is what's going to really clean the windows and the glass where there's no streaks and it cleans off very easily. So again, a liter spray bottle, ideally it would be a metal one, um, but use plastic if that's all you have. And it'd be um, more vinegar than water. So it's really strong smelling, like two cups water or vinegar and a half a cup of water. Um, and then I'm saying 10 drops of the citrus oil, but you're gonna probably need more drops than that. I need to correct this slide, but you're probably at least 20, 20 to 30 drops. And you can, lavender is great in vinegar because it really reduces the smell of the vinegar. Lemon is great in the vinegar. You want to use lemon in a window in a window cleaner or a glass spray because that is part of what helps it to um, not streak and get really crystal clear. Um, and then I recommend lemon lavender as your oils that you use in the window cleaner because lavender decreases the smell of the vinegar, and lemon helps with the 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 activity of cleaning glass or windows. 
Next one is dishwashing soap. So there is a recipe on the On Guard spray or On Guard, or there is a recipe somewhere. I thought it used to be on the, oh yeah, it is. It's on the bottle of the On Guard cleaner concentrate of how to make your own, um, well, they have how to make your own multi-purpose cleaner on there and how to make your dish soap um, clean. So you, I, I remember this in America. I didn't do it so much in Israel where you'd fill uh, the sink up with soapy water and then just clean all the dishes in the soapy water in the sink. So that's the recipe. Like three tablespoons of this in, um, in a gallon or a sink full of water. So you get this really sudsy, soapy water and you clean all of your dishes in that. Um, it's not actually teaching you how to make like a, a dishwashing liquid that's gonna just be there at your sink to use. So you, you can wash, wash your dishes by making a sudsy, soapy water in your sink and then washing all of your dishes in that. I wouldn't recommend just putting a little bit this, of this on each dish. It would be too soapy. It would be hard to get all the soap off. Um, and then there are good brands of dishwashing liquid in Israel. I'm kind of, I think Ecover is a brand that they sell. And it's not that much more expensive than Fairy and all those other ones that people use uh, or now I'm forgetting, I'm, I'm cross-changing brands from here and there. Um, but Ecover is for sure one. And then there's another one. Um, if anybody, anybody can unmute themselves if they're using a non-toxic dishwashing liquid for washing dishes, um, unmute yourself and tell us the brand of it. So that Eco Friend. Eco Friend. Eco Friend, that's it. Ecofriend. They're kind of like mimicking Ecover because Ecover is like, I think, a U.S. brand that's in Israel. It's a little more expensive. And then there's Ecofriend, which is also good. Um, yeah, Kara, I've heard yeah. recently that Ecover has a problem with some of the uh, ingredients in their products. Okay, so Ecofriend. <laughs> Let's do Ecofriend, not Ecofriend. Eco right. <laughs> okay. Um, and, you know, there's this would be a good homework for everybody. It's like, if it's like a clearly cheap dishwashing detergent, you don't need to research all the ingredients. You know, it's probably not so good for you and you should just get it out of your life. But if you have like a relatively, a one that you think, I think it's pretty natural and it's probably good. Look at the ingredients and you can just Google all the ingredients and it'll tell you. Um, I think there's like, uh, even a web, like you can Google, like what are the top toxic ingredients in um, the the dirty dozen, I think they call it, the dirty dozen ingredients in grooming and household cleaning products. And you just want to make sure that those are not in any of your products and do a little research. And there might be some things that you'll be surprised at because there are more and more companies that that know, like this is the way of the future. This is, people are smart. They're becoming aware that they want products that are safe in their home. And so a lot of mainstream companies are switching over and taking out these toxic ingredients. Maybe they have to go up in price a little bit, but they're, they're gonna, they want to stay in business. So you may see that some of your products are, you don't have to replace. They're good. Keep them. And then you can just rest assured, okay, I did my homework. I'm taking care of me and my family. And I know that this product is okay and I can wash my dishes with it or, um, you know, clean my toilets with it, what, whatever products that, that you're using that, and just be clear that you can keep it because you did the research to see it's still good. Um, so that's washing your dishes. Next one is sink, sink cleaner, bathroom scoring powder. Um, so sink cleaner, I honestly use the all-purpose, the concentrate on guard concentrate for the sink in the bathroom and the sink in the kitchen. But if you need it to be a little more um, tougher, like scouring where it's, cause this is soft, so it's not really gonna scrub like um, soap scum or um, stuff that's really kind of like, the mostly soapy scum that like just stays in the side of the bathtub or the tiles or the sink. So you're gonna wanna include baking soda and vinegar. 
So a quarter cup baking soda, half a cup of vinegar, add a little squirt of your concentrate. I'm sorry, I don't have that on there. And then you could go stronger than three drops, like five to seven drops. I'll correct this slide and I can send this out to everybody. Um, lavender, you want to use lemon because again, that's a soap sc scum, soap scrub. It'll get rid of, it dissolves soap scum. And rosemary also is really helpful, it smells amazing. So those are the three I recommend for your sink cleaner in the bathroom and in the kitchen. Um, and they're saying, it's basically I'm repeating myself with the bathroom scoring powder. It's that they're using borax instead of baking soda and they're just using more bake. Uh, this recipe has more baking soda um, just because you're maybe covering a bigger surface like the bathtub or the side of the shower. So you'll just want to up, up the amount. So it's a cup of baking soda. You should still use vinegar. So I don't know why I didn't put that on there, but still use that half a cup of vinegar. And then thyme and oregano, because they're just really killing, like this is mold and um, mildew, getting rid of mold and mildew. That would be really strong smelling. And I personally have never used those two together only. Um, I would probably use thyme and on guard, because on guard also will kill mildew and mold. And then also use lemon. So time, I do five drops time, five drops on guard, five drops lemon. And I'll, I'll correct that slide and send it out to you guys. And I have a story about, a, she might be on the call, um, a fellow doTERRA wellness advocate. She was just a customer at the time using the oils. Her name is Devora, and she had a really bad mildew and mold um, infestation in the corner of her closet in like a lower, I think it was like one of the low, lowest levels of the house, you know, so basically it's kind of like the lowest level cellar kind of feeling where you can collect a lot of mold and mildew because it's like under the ground basically. And it was really, she got a serious infection, lung and cold infection due to the, she discovered it was due to the mold and mildew. and I had her with her diffuser put it right there in the area with the on guard. Um, I think she, I only had her do the on guard, but now I would like say on guard lemon and thyme. And she just had that going and it killed the mold and mildew within a few days. And she recovered completely from this infection. And it's just so amazing when people are like, well, it's just an essential oil. What can it do? It's like, it can kill mold and mildew, black mold and mildew and get rid of it completely. Um, and then you can make this scrub and then go scrub it, scrub the area too, to make sure you just get it, get it off the surfaces. Um, floor cleaner, I do this pretty, cons I, like every Shabbat when I, right, or Moshe Shabbat before, uh, not Moshe Shabbat, Arab Shabbat, like before getting ready for Shabbat, cleaning the floors. Um, I, I, you can do it in a bucket or I just do it straight into the kitchen sink, plug it up, fill it with water. I squeeze, um, you know, uh, probably what I'm, I'm not even measuring it, but I just do a good squeeze of this on guard concentrate into the, into the sink water or the bucket of water. And then I do, um, just a splash of vinegar. I'm saying half a cup, uh, probably a little bit less than half a cup. And, um, and then I just choose what cocktail of essential oils I want that day. But I, I almost always, I for sure always use lemon. I'm in love with eucalyptus right now. So I always use eucalyptus. And then I decide between peppermint and lavender. And, you know, it's a big, a big sink of water or a big bucket because you're covering the whole floor. So you know, three to five drops of each. And it will clean the floors beautifully. Um, if there's any type, it'll keep, like I think I never had an ant problem in Israel, which in my issue, there was lots of people that complained about ants. And I'm convinced that I never had an ant problem because I always clean the floors with essential oils in the water and almost all of them ants don't like. So I never, 
got ants in the house and on the counters either because I always use this all-purpose cleaning spray that had all these essential oils that ants don't like. And you know who else doesn't like these mice? Um, so if there's mice or mouse in the in your town or yeshuv or city, they won't come into your house either because they hate peppermint. They hate rosemary. They won't come near it. Um, so great, but all these essential oils are good for anti-critter, anti-insects. And if you're using it on your floor and your countertops, they're going to stay away from the house. If you have it going in the diffuser, they're going to stay away from the house. So fabric softener, I learned this from someone and I had our actually Mikva in Dakoa started using it because she wanted to stop using um, fabric softener that she felt was toxic and not good for the towels, but they, they always hung their towels up to dry and so they'd be stiff and hard and she really wanted them to be softer for the women that came into the Mikva. And so they started using this fabric softener solution of, so you get your gallon size vinegar, white vinegar, and you just add to the vinegar lavender and peppermint. I'm saying 10 drops of each. I would now know to go higher than that, probably 20 drops of each, double that of lavender and peppermint. And you add one cup to half a cup, half a cup to one cup in the fabric softener section of, or you know, I, I forget how the, the, in the U.S. there's a little section in the dish where you put your fabric softener. I forget in the Israeli um, dishwasher or washing machines if they have that, someone un can unmute themselves and tell me. Because if you don't have the compartment, then you just have to add it to the load when, um, as you do with the, the with the detergent. But if you have the compartment, you'd put it in there and you, you use that, you use this recipe in the washing part of your, when you're washing your towels and when you're washing your clothes. And the lavender and the peppermint offset the smell of the vinegar. So you won't be smelling that in your clothes and your towels. Room deodorizer, I think everybody on this call is probably good at this, making their own room deodorizers or just having a diffuser. But like if you want like a spray in the bathroom or you want to just take it with you and have like a little spray for the car after you filled up with cat gas and it smells like gas, you can make your own room deodorizers because those spray bottles that you see almost in every public restroom in Israel are so toxic don't spray them when you're in the bathroom because you'll just inhale it and it's the worst for your lungs. Um, and just have one in your purse, spray it in the bathroom before you go in so you're not like taking in anybody else's um, energy or stink and um, use it in your, and make it, it's fun to make it for your own bathrooms. It's, so in like, here's kind of an example of a spray bottle um, ideally glass, but you know, don't get caught up if you can only find plastic. And I'm doing this measurement as if it's a hundred milliliter bottle. Um, again, I add all the ingredients and then just fill the water to the top. So I am saying three quarters full with water, but first add the ingredients and then just fill it up with water. Um, so here, the recipe that we're using, but you can use any oils you can think of, but why I put lemongrass in it is lemongrass is one of the best oils for um, airborne pathogens. So there are a lot of pathogens that just stay on the surface, and but there are some that are just hanging out in the air. And so lemongrass is one of the best ones for capturing those and killing them. And then lavender is good for that as well and, and, and for surface and it smells amazing and you can add anything else. So five drops of lavender, five drops lemongrass, you can go, you know, I always kind of start conservatively with less drops. And then when you get all the ingredients in there and before you fill it to the top with water, smell it and see if it smells like what you'd want it to smell when you spray it. If it doesn't smell strong enough, add more drops. Um, you know, essential oils is not an exact recipe like you have to kind of change the oils to your liking change the amount to your liking use your intuitive sense to do it 
um, according to what you feel what you feel will really make a good deodorizer. So maybe it's ten drops of lavender and five drops, but start on the um, conservative side so that it's not too strong because you can't take away, but you can add. And then you have to, in a deodorizer and in these little spray bottles, you have to have some kind of what's called a, um, an emollient or a um, emulsifier is the word I'm looking for. Because if you just add lavender and lemongrass to water and say, okay, here's my room spray, you'll just see the essential oils floating on top. So sometimes you'll get a big burst of the, sm the scent and the oil, and other times it'll be mostly water and alcohol, water. So you need an emulsifier, which is either rubbing alcohol, witch hazel, which I'll add to the slide, or vodka, um, drinking vodka. And those are emulsifiers and they're good for room deodorizers. They'll, they'll spread the essential oil through the water so it's evenly distributed through the water. It'll keep it distributed so it doesn't all just float to the top and you have to constantly shake it. And then both of those will just off gas when you spray it so you're mostly smelling the essential oils and you won't be smelling vodka or rubbing alcohol. Um, and, you know, rubbing alcohol is in most of these um, hand sanitizers because it does have sanitizing qualities as well as vodka. Um, and then variety of oils you can use. Geranium is beautiful. Pink pepper is amazing in a room spray. And they put pink pepper in all those sabon or all, uh, um, the body shop, all these like kind of mainstream soap and body spray type of stores are using pink pepper. And we have true amazing pink pepper. So, and if you're like, how do I use, why do I, how do I use pink pepper? Use it in your room deodorizer sprays or in any of these things that we're making. Pink pepper is great. It's great for that. It smells great. And it has all these disinfectant qualities to it. Okay. And so it may, we're ending, it may be uh, difficult to eliminate all toxins from your life because when you step out of the house, you're going to be exposed to things that you can't control. But you absolutely can reduce the toxics that you're exposed to in your own home. You are control in control of your environment in your home, especially as the woman and the caregiver and the queen of the home. You're in charge of your home and making it as healthy as you can. So go through your cleaning products maybe next week we'll do grooming products, go through your cleaning products. And even if it's a full bottle, but you know it's toxic, just get rid of it and feel the joy of like, oh my God, like, okay, maybe I just wasted some money, but it feels good to get rid of this. It's toxic for me and my family. I'm gonna just throw it away, this full bottle of Economica. And I'm gonna use these other solutions. Go to look around your house you probably already have empty plastic spray bottles everybody has usually has a bunch of empty ones sitting around that they're holding on to they're not quite sure what they're going to use them for make some of these try to make two or three of these today a cleaning what are, what do you use the most right now that you can't live without get the all-purpose concentrate on your order your next doTERRA order i have one in each bathroom because um, this is what I use for my toilet bowl cleaning. I put just a drop of this in the toilet bowl. Um, if there's some extra scrubbing that needs to occur, I'll, I'll sprinkle a little bit of baking soda. And this is my toilet bowl cleaner and it cleans amazing. It's great and it's non-toxic. Um, I don't have to buy those big ridiculous green bottles that you spray around the rim and it smells disgusting and you're, you hope your child doesn't put their hands on the rim. This is great. This is, I use this. I have this in each bathroom. This is basically what I use. This and the all-purpose spray that was the first recipe. And then after this call, I'm making the window glass cleaner um, because those are the three main things that I use in cleaning. And I did discover that another thing that I use is wood polish cleaner, and I don't have a recipe for that. So on our WhatsApp group, if anybody wants to create a wood polish cleaner, 
put it on there because I would love to make it because those are the things that I use. Toilet bowl cleaner, all-purpose spray. Bathroom sink, all-purpose concentrate. Um, my all-purpose spray is what I clean everything in the kitchen with, but I need a wood polish cleaner because I do use wood polish cleaner. Now that I'm in the States, everything's wood. Um, so that's it. Everybody, thank you so much for being on. And I'm gonna um, stop the video and open it up for questions. I have a question. 